Good afternoon, everyone. We are Team Carried Interest. I'd like to thank you all for coming to watch our presentation. Today, we're going to present to you our strategic recommendation for the corner. My name is Kabir Joher. I'm from Syosset, New York. My name is Maria Pullman, and I'm from Dallas, Texas. My name is Noah Kedme. I'm from Manalapa, New Jersey. And my name is Keyshawn Patel, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. So today, we're going to review the background of the firm Bar Harbor Capital in addition to the property the corner, then we'll move into our recommendation within the executive summary, then we'll move forward with an overview of today's market with a macro perspective and a property analysis, then we'll discuss investor considerations as we review possible risks with the case and how we plan to mitigate those risks. Now Bar Harbor Capital was founded in 1991 as they acquire, manage, and dispose of assets with a complete in-house team including construction. Today, they have over $6 billion of assets in the New York City area, making them one of the largest owners of Class A high street retail in the New York, in the New York metro area. So furthermore, they prefer to raise capital in a closed-end fund structure, typically with a five to eight year outside fund term. And something pretty exciting with Bar Harbor Capital is their plans to break into the London market with, market with Bar Harbor European Partners 1. The building, commonly referred to as the corner, was purchased in 2011 and is now 80% leased. It has five floors with a floor to area ratio of 10, allowing for three additional units. Its current tenants are Brooks Fathers, Whole Cycle, Brunch Fitness, and its fifth floor is currently vacant. The building is owned in a 2008 vintage fund with an overall levered return target of 15 to 20% gross IRR. The fund has an end date of December 31st, 2017, but can be extended by vote. Bar Harbor Capital has fully liquidated its other assets, uh, leaving the corner as its orphan asset. So moving on to the executive summary, um, our building and our fund currently face a few challenges. First off, we want to avoid major dilution of the fund IRR of 15 to 20% with this property. Not only that, but we're also looking at a vacant fifth floor, which could be a problem. Uh, cap rates are also increasing, which we'll touch on in our macro overview. And the fund closes at end of year with a uh, extendable by vote. So our solution for the property is to sell. We plan to lease the fifth floor to a tenant to stabilize NOI. Then from our sale, we would use our profits to fund shareholders sooner through our promote structure. And not only that, but we'd also be avoiding the systematic risk associated with holding the asset. The Upper East Side flourishes as a posh residential neighborhood in the heart of Manhattan. In addition to its high-end retailers, such as Gucci, Prada, Chanel, just to name a few. Located between 5th Avenue, 59th Street, East River, and 96th Street, the Upper East Side continues to grow with residents coming to the neighborhood. However, retail still continues to struggle. According to CBRE's quarter one market report, rents declined 7.9% from the end of 2016 to the beginning of 2017. Year on year asking rents declined 18.1% from quarter one 2017 to quarter one 2018 emphasizing the Upper East Side struggle with space remaining on the market for long periods of time. Total leasing also continues to decrease quarter after quarter as new supply continues to add to the market. As we know, interest rates are rising and this is because the Federal Reserve does not want the economy to overinflate. This will lead to an increased cost of capital which will also lead to an increase uh, risk-free rates. Cap rates are also at historical lows, but retail headwinds and trends are indicating uh, a rise in, in risk premium demanded by investors. Also currently, New York City legislation is pushing towards rent control uh, in terms of retail, and this is also likely to increase risk premiums as well as increase vacancies. Thank you for that, Kabir. Uh, before we get into the details of our strategic decision, I'd like to provide you a brief overview of the property as it is now. In terms of strengths, we have an extremely strong ground floor tenant with an excellent credit history, and it's highly unlikely that this tenant will default on its lease. Um, moving forward, for each of our current tenants, we have rent escalations built in at 3% year on year, which is an indication of strong and stable NOI growth year on year. Additionally, it is a great corner property with great exposure to sunlight, something which is quite rare in the New York market. Um, something else to note is also that this property has a uh, uh, completely updated utility system in terms of HVAC, electrical, plumbing, and roof. Moving forward to weaknesses of the property, we find that cap rates may increase due to rising interest rates in the market, as well as the fact that we have a vacant fifth floor 
um, and this has been vacant for quite some time now. Additionally, as mentioned earlier, uh, research indicates that asking rents have declined over the last few quarters in the New York Upper East Side market. Um, and moving forward to opportunity, the major opportunity of this property is that it has the ability to build up to three additional floors. Um, also, another op major opportunity would be potentially to sell the asset as it is now and distribute profits of the fund to shareholders and investors, which could also allow um, the relocation of useful resources into Bar Harbor Capital's initiative in the European market. Moving forward to threats, uh, the macroeconomic environment simply may not work in favor of our in favor of the property in terms of risk premiums, as well as the fact that retail as a real estate asset class in the New York market is simply seen as riskier and more undesirable than other retail um, than other real estate asset classes, and this simply could impede liquidity upon sale. Moving forward, why did we come to the decision to sell? Well, essentially, selling provides the highest rate of return. But what did we do to uh, what did we do to come to that conclusion? As mentioned earlier, we had the we had the major opportunity to build up to three floors on our property. As you guys can tell, there are many options we we looked into. We explored the option of building all three floors. We built we explored the option of building one floor with the residential. We ran several. We sound we ran countless financial models, and simply at the end of it. There's only one option that seemed to be even um, that seemed to be even reasonably feasible given the background of the property, and this option was the option to build an additional floor with a rooftop. Um, however, even in a best case scenario, this option provided a lower rate of return compared to selling. Um, as you can see, we were so invested in this idea initially that we even made a rendering. As you can see, we made a sixth floor along with a rooftop. Um, the reasoning behind is re the reasoning behind this is we're putting in less and getting out more in terms of investment and our return. However, this property came with numerous risks. We looked at first of all the construction budget and timeline. Although we've um, accounted for 1.35 million dollars in our construction budget, it's highly likely that this construction budget will run over, as well as the fact that again we've accounted for a one-year timeline for the construction period, but Again, again, it's highly likely that this timeline will go over the one-year accounted period. Next, the overhead fixed cost of running a fund. Bar Harbor Capital, this is the last, this is the last asset in its um, BHP1 fund. And there are risks and internal resources as well as costs associated with running this fund that are simply not included in the assets pro forma itself. You have costs such as compliance, legal, accounting. These are all things that should be taken into account that are not mentioned in the pro forma of the asset itself. And it's important to take note of this. Additionally, finding a tenant. As mentioned, as, you, as mentioned before, as you saw in the rendering, we have a sixth floor and a rooftop. Given the fact that the building is um, more geared towards fitness tenants, it's highly unlikely that we would have been able to find a fitness-related tenant who would have a healthy enough health ratio to afford this sort of rent and would be willing to take up this opportunity. This is just a risk that must be taken account for. Next, one of the most important things we saw, the negative impact on the property during the construction period. For example, you have things like inaccessibility to elevators, stairways. Um, additionally, as mentioned earlier, as a strength of the property, the property has great sunlight exposure. Given the fact that this building would be under construction for a one year period, the building would be completely covered in a scaffolding on the exterior. This would completely ruin the sunlight exposure to the whole building itself, something that these fitness tenants probably uh, saw as a benefit to their property. Um, this would ultimately lead us to um, provide rent discounts, if not free periods of rent on the property, further diluting our return. This brings me to the conclusion of this alternative strategy. At 14% of the fund's portfolio, it simply did not make sense to devote useful resources, ultimately for a decrease in IRR when compared to selling. Internal resources could have, been, could have better been used in the Bar Harbor Capital's initiative to expand into the European market. And additionally, given a lower rate of return, there's simply no need to expose the property to major market risk, especially given the fact of the, especially given the fact that cap rates may rise and or the fact that our net operating income may fall. So moving on to the investment analysis and investment summary. We ran the two pro formas for the IRR of our expansion and the IRR of our sales strategy. So for the IRR of our expansion, we look to hold, build, then sell. We tried to paint this in the rosiest light possible. 
Uh, we assume trended 3% year-over-year rental growth and exit cap at 4.75% in year eight. Uh, we assumed a construction loan would be taken out to build out the sixth floor and the rooftop at approximately 6% interest with a three-year uh, maturity. And our conclusion was that the IRR is diluted because of a longer timeline and an increased exit cap, which further hurts the terminal value and profitability. In terms of the IRR of our sales strategy, we have 11.35%, which is greater than that of our expansion, because our strategy is simply to stabilize our NOI and then sell. For our assumptions, we were actually not that aggressive. We assumed that no rental growth, only the escalations that are currently in place from the leases. We assumed an exit cap at 4.25%, 50 bips lower than the IRR of our expansion because it would be two years earlier. And also another strength that we assumed was that there was no need for a fund vote. Our conclusion was that the IRR is higher in this case because the shorter timeline requires, uh, because there's a shorter timeline and less equity is involved. And not only that, the equity or the NOI is stabilized within the sale year. Now, obviously, no plan is perfect, so we looked at some threats of selling. First off, we looked at missing the boat. If we decide to commit to selling, we may be missing out on property gains if our market or macro views are incorrect or if there's a positive shock to the market that may affect our property. But to mitigate this, we can redeploy our resources and human capital into Bar Harbor European uh, Fund 1, making sure that we take advantage of those potential macro trends. Another threat of selling would be finding a tenant within the year. So the fifth floor has been vacant for some time, as we know, and if we are unable to find a tenant at time of sale, terminal value could be hurt because we were going to have a lower NOI. But if needed, we could increase rent concessions, free rent, leasing commissions, and other uh, incentives for tenants to sign, which would stabilize the NOI for sale. With that, uh, we'd like to conclude our presentation by saying that we'd like to pursue the route of selling our property at end of year 2017, which would be year six, after finding a tenant and stabilizing NOI. While the expansion plan considers adding value, the increased exit cap and longer timeline hurt our IRR and NPV, and we can utilize our internal resources and devote them to our new fund instead of focusing on a plan that overexposes itself to too much risk. With that, we'd like to open up the floor for questions, and thank you all for listening. Oh, also, we've got um, a couple of sensitivity analyses and underwriting methods in place if you have any questions. Yeah, I would have thought from four young real estate entrepreneurs here that we would be a little bit more aggressive here instead of just kind of taking the easy way out. I mean, does that bother you that you're, that you're doing it that way? I mean, it certainly isn't as nice of a narrative as holding on to the asset, building it, and then selling it. But in terms of bottom line, it really does hurt us to hold on to this asset. We're just simply overexposing ourselves to too much risk. Even if we assume the best case scenarios, we assume that rents are uh, the extra floors are rented out at $70 a square foot, with $40 or $45 a square foot for the rooftop space, we only reach an IRR of 10%, which for holding the asset for another two years just for a reduction in IRR doesn't make sense to us. Agreed, and to add on to that, I think the best risk appetite we can have in this case is the safest risk appetite, and we all are aware of retail and it's changing, and I think the ability to sell is, uh, originally we wanted to be optimistic, which is why we built out the rendering and the plan, and we want to see retail, we want to be optimistic, we want to see it flourish, especially in a city like New York City. However, it's not worth the risk. Your um, thought process and where retail is going, what happens if you don't lease that floor by the end of the year? Yeah, so we considered that, but um, so taking a look at our underwriting for the sale in year six case, um, our, here's our orange assumes that the fifth floor tenant is rented out at $65 a square foot. Um, it doesn't hurt us that much to not have a tenant in there, actually at the time of sale, because almost 70% of our rent comes from our ground floor tenant. And we could also sell the idea or of selling the dream, which would have a, uh, a buyer looking to build the additional three floors, which could be a major bargaining chip. Why not consider selling it today rather than waiting for the end of the year? And I think you're 65 is above market from what was in the Sure, house. absolutely. So uh, the reason why we assume that we would have a tenant in year six is because no matter what, the timing of the cash flows is gonna be at end of year, year six, if we assume a sale even with a vacancy, because the, uh, the prompt said it, it was January 1st, 2017 when we received it. So we're assuming that we'll have a tenant signed and the sale process completed by December 31st, 2017. Um. You have in the bottom there an assumption of a sale of four and a quarter. Can you go back to the, you had a comparison page. Sure. Yep. Talked about um, developing versus sale. Right. Yeah. And, and, um, and there you're at 4.25. And 
you talked about rising rates, 50 right. basis points higher. How does how do you get an exit cap rate of 4.25 percent on a sale of the existing property, and and what part of that is rising the rates based on the cap rates? Uh, going up. Right. So we're assuming that cap rates are going to increase over the next few years, which is why we assume the higher cap rate in year eight at 4.75. So we assume the cap rates would likely increase by around 50 bips because of the macroeconomic uh, trends that are currently in place. Okay. So right now you believe the cap rate is 4.25% 4, 4 and that's versus the market going up in the future. Exactly. Okay. And when you're selling it at the end of the s sixth year, uh, that's based only on it being rented? Have you done any analysis where, in effect, if you, as, as you mentioned, if you sold it now mm -hmm. uh, and immediately, as quickly as you can, let the new buyer assume uh, an upside based on the right. risk? Have you done any analysis compared to selling it now versus selling it at the end right. of the Right. We actually year? did. We didn't include it in the pro forma because our, or in the appendix here because we assumed that we would have a tenant by that time because we had the strategy of increasing leasing commissions, free rent, et cetera. But overall, it wouldn't hurt our IRR that much because it's only up, accounts for approximately five to ten percent of the rent, I believe, uh, and therefore only five to ten percent of the NOI. Uh, and it would still be approximately, I think, eleven or ten point seven five or eleven percent IRR, which is still greater than our IRR of expansion. That that is selling it now. So if, if it's that close, why wouldn't you sell it now and take no risk versus selling it at the end of year six? Right. I think that's certainly um, a great point. But I think that we wanted to have the tenant in place because no matter what, it would occur in the same sale year. So we would increase our NOI and therefore increase our IRR because of that, if that makes sense. Thank you. I think in addition to that, we wanted to make the sell more attractive to potential buyers. Therefore, we were willing to go out and do these commissions and do what we can to get the space uh, you talked about the FAR ratio of 10 times, which is an additional three fours. Uh, is that in place now, or is that something you would need to apply for? Um, I believe that it's currently already in place. We don't actually own the FAR, so we would essentially just be selling the dream to another buyer. Um, sorry, last one. Sure. Um, how, how did you uh, s is, uh, set the 4.25% today? Is there any basis to... Yeah, so we had uh, actually a couple of comps that were given to us, uh, sale comps, that assumed, uh, I believe, a cap rate between 4 and 5.5%. So I will agree that a 4.25% exit cap rate is a bit aggressive for our property, given our tenancy and the comps. But even if all else were equal, um, the cap rate being increased here would also result in the cap rate being increased here. So the IRRs would still be approximately the same difference. not uh, think that the IRR would be lower if that floor was vacant? Um, yeah, so we ran the sensitivities for one second, um, of exit cap versus IRR and NPV. And I think that our exit cap would be a bit higher in that case, or our NOI would be actually be a bit lower. But if we were to have a tenant in place, I think a buyer were to be a lot more comfortable having had a lease signed for the fifth floor. remember my other question. So do you, do you, you strongly believe that you can get a cap rate at four and a quarter, uh, you're going to sell the building by the end of 17, and you've got space coming up for renewal in a declining rental market for retail in three years. Right. And I'm the buyer. I'm not giving you that four and a quarter. Well, I think that's based off of just our comps that we have in place. So um, I think a buyer would be willing to do that because our leases don't end. Uh, Brooks Father's lease doesn't end until I believe 2019, and for the other few floor or other few tenants, they don't increase until 2021 or 2022. So at that point, the buyer certainly wants to take a look at that, but I don't feel that it would affect our sale price to that point. As well as the fact with your question of the renewal of the lease, we believe that it was highly likely that Brooks Fathers would be renewing their lease, given the fact that the case states that they are one of the most that was one of the most profitable locations in the country. So we are confident um, that we would be seeing a lease renewal. And as well as he mentioned, the next leases are expiring all the way between 2021 and 2022. So we are confident with those assumptions. So, so I'll, I'll ask the uh, uh, 
a question related to lease term. Gotcha. So, so you're, you're sitting there with uh, all your tenants coming up in the next, in effect, two or three or four years. Right. Any analysis done in assumption, I'm, I'm going to go back to, my, to the tenants. I'm going to renegotiate the leases. I'm going to confirm they're doing well. I'm going to drop the rents. I'm going to extend the terms. Any analysis ever done by saying, uh, what kind of cap rate could I sell it for when everybody is at uh, three to four years versus how much I could sell it for if everybody is at eight to ten years? Uh, and just by saying, if you, the oh, uh, we're all concerned about the cap rate because if the exit cap rate today is an average of something between four and five and a half, right. I basically divide that in the middle and I say that's four and three quarters. Sure. But then, but you've come in there with a cap rate of four and a quarter, and while the difference between that and construction would still be fifty basis points, your IRR returns uh, are are showing very positive because you're very aggressive I, with your cap rate. But the question still is. Any, any analysis ever done between extending leases and recognizing that justifies a low cap rate versus existing leases with some concessions and, and a higher cap rate? Right, so we only ran a one-way sensitivity of exit cap rate versus IRR. So if we were to do four and three quarters, we'd still be at about 9% on the IRR, but this would also result in the expansion strategies IRR being decreased as well because you would assume an even a higher exit cap rate for that scenario. We didn't run a two-way sensitivity of NOI versus uh, exit cap, which I think might have been helpful with the case of possibly extending the leases and lowering rent in those cases. I appreciate the approach um, that you took to, you know, to want to wind up the fund and get this asset sold and out of the market. Did, did the team think about what's the highest and best use for this building? I think the best use for this building is currently just to build up for our selling the dream to a buyer because we have that um, scenario in place so we have the three additional floors that we could build I don't think that this I think that this build is hemorrhaging a lot of the profits that the fund could be making I don't think that having this building as a 15 to 20 percent target IRR is reasonable maybe it was 10 years ago when the fund was started but because market rents have declined so much this building is just hemorrhaging money for the fund in addition to that, if we decided to go with our plan and expend and um, allocate tenants, the market we would be targeting would be more fitness. And I know fitness may not be the best tenants to target. However, what we notice in New York City, the trends that take place are the new age millennial fitness, Soul Cycle, Rumble. Those tenants are looking for spaces as they grow. and. In the provided information, the whole cycle, which I'm assuming is a cycle studio tenant, uh, they have sold out classes every day. They're making profit. They're all expanding. So I think uh, displaying, um, advertising the building as a fitness center, not fitness center, but a fitness hub of a rumble, a, soul, a whole cycle, uh, any of those uh, niche that are completely growing and seeking more exposure rather than going to an American Eagle to shop or uh, something of that nature. Um, to further answer your question, we looked at the compare, we compared the IRR side by side, given that they were so close, um, even if the expansion IRR was slightly higher, we still would have stuck with our original strategy of selling because we believe that the construction risks are just too great um, to even consider at an IRR difference of that, dif of that extent of one to 2%. And the fact of the matter is that the IRR comes out to be lower. So it's, there's no question as to why would we expand over why would we sell. So we're, we're extremely confident in the fact that selling provides the highest rate of return.